I've got a bit of orange juice. Orange juice, that's a first. Mm. I've got a bit of a sore throat. I think I've got a bit of a lurgy. But here we go. This is uh, issues 56 and 57, I think, of uh, the Star Trek Starships. This goes up to uh, 90, I think, is the, the planned length of the series at the moment. But running out of shelf space. So anyway, let's uh, see what we've got in this one. I've taken the stuff off the box, so let's have a look at what we've got here yeah, without trying to see the shit myself, which is a pain in the ass. Uh, so. Uh, number 56 is difficult to do this there we go, oh that's right don't need that, we'll go off right, number 56 is the Sabre class excuse my uh, sniffling slightly uh, the USS Jaeger light cruiser launch 24th century length 223 meters maximum speed warp 9.7 don't say, don't think I'm familiar with this one, but looks quite good. Ooh, look at that. It's uh, triangular. Triangular. Light cruiser, 24th century. Uh, crew 40. Weaponry uh, type 10 phaser emitters. Don't know the difference between the types, but I'm sure somebody who's watching will do. And torpedo launchers. Ugh, no. Right. I always have trouble with the lighting with this camera because it's much more sensitive. Okay, wow. There's a lot of detail there. I wonder if that's on the model. That would be nice. Hmm. We shall see. The Sabre class. Oh, yeah. yeah, good. Compact and well armed. Sabre class ships were involved in battles with the Borg and the Dominion in the 24th century. Uh, approximately, at approximately 223 metres in length, the Sabre class was a relatively small type of 24th century Starfleet vessel that had operated with a standard crew of 40. The entire ship was a similar size to the saucer section of a Galaxy class starship. Alright, okie dokie. Do 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 do. Yeah, it's got cargo bays there. One and two. And. During the Dominion War, small manoeuvrable ships such as the Sabre class and the Defiant class were often used to defeat larger vessels from attack, allowing them to concentrate on breaking through enemy lines. Ah, pawns then. <laughs> oh, excuse me. It doesn't look too bad actually. There's a lot of detail in that one. I don't know if that will transfer to the model, but we shall see. A human settlement known as Utopia Colony was established on Mars and at least as early as 2155. Tom Paris' idea of a perfect date was to visit the hills overlooking the Utopia uh, Planitia Plains in a 1957 Chevy. Hmm, okay. Buzzard collector. I always think the, uh, the bird fanatics like to collect birds. Buzzards. Ventricle <laughs> uh, Nassau. You. Right, designing the ship <coughs> doesn't seem to have evolved that much. Assembling the Borg Queen. I like this when they put these articles in that are a bit variety, not just about the ship, but you know something loosely related. Cool, I like that. Yeah. Wish I could, excuse me. I wish I could draw I like that. A memory from uh, De Lego's childhood of a grasshopper leg inspired several concepts involving an insect like appendage attached to the Borg Queen. Cool, but expensive. Oh, nice drawings. Hmm, okay. Uh, De Lego's favourite concept featured the Borg Queen torso mounted on a metallic spike. All illustrations were influenced by ancient Egyptian imagery. Good, but yeah. Don't see that happening. Oh, look at that. That's almost sexual. Almost. In fact, might be. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes. First appearance Star Trek, first Star Trek First Contact. Uh, TV appearances Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Key appearances Star Trek First Contact. And Star Trek Deep 
space. Now, I don't know why I'm covering this because you can see what the uh, next ship is in the title. But there we go with my fun. Hey, and there is the same glass in all its glory. So let's put the uh, book to one side and uh, aha, let's have a look at the ship in all its naked glory. Ricky. Here it is in its box and Hmm, it looks like the detail is there. Go, cool. let's get it out. More boxes to add to my uh, wall, of my Star Trek brick wall over there. There's the vessel. There's our nuclear vessel. And the stand. Right, let's get this out. Squish away. Oh, sniffles. It's that time of year. I'll be getting the cough soon. Oh, wonderful. That will last ages. Anyway, first impressions. Where's the metal? I'm not sure there is any metal in this. It's very light. I think they pulled a fast one on us. Not sure there's any metal in this. Might be this section. Yes, it's possibly that section, but doesn't feel it. But I have one word. Van bloody tastic. Wow, what an excellent little model. It reminds me of the Enterprise D. Uh, the quality of that. It's really good. I'm just looking through it and, you know, it's nicely detailed. It's uh, lovely texture to the uh, paintwork. There's real detail in there in the paintwork. Going down here, the Aztec in, all the details on the little uh, parts there. Nice cells look really good. Wow. That is, uh, especially for the scale of the thing, that is a really good model. Excellent. Well done, Eagle Moss. That is a good one. So let's have a look at some views of this thing. Bring the light over a bit for you. All right, there's its ass. Side view. Front view. Plan view, which is quite good. Bottom view. And there's that uh, deflected dish. I should be a director. That is really nice. I like that one. Yes, that's good. Let's put down this little stand. on the stand. Ta -da. I'll show it in plan view uh, in a bit when I do the other one, but yes, like that one. A little bit loose on the stand there, but it's not going to uh, come off. And yeah, like that one. That's success. Success. So, let's see if we can continue the success with the second one. Oh dear. Romulan Bird of Prey. Somehow, I don't think this is going to have a lot of detail on it. We get a lot, a lot of Romulan bird of I ain't got a whole collection so far. Let's have a look. Hmm. Sorry, <coughs> drink of orange needed. Right, type warship. Correct. Launch 23rd century, length 131 meters. Weapon plasma energy. This is a really early ship. Obviously. I'll switch that off. Okay. <sighs> Romulan 23rd Century Bird of Prey. Star Trek designs of Wa Ming Chang. The Romulan Empire before the Tomed Incident. Hmm. On screen. Right. Okay. Uh, 23rd Century, 131 meters. Cloaking device. Plasma-based torpedoes. <laughs> yeah. 
this uh, really isn't going to have much detail on this model, is it? No. Romulan Bird of Prey was equipped with both cloaking device and powerful plasma-based weapon. The Romulan Bird of Prey had a single hull design with the forward swept wings, on the ends of which were nacelle-like structures. Its appearance was not dissimilar to that of Starfleet ships, and that its main section was saucer-shaped, although it did feature a stabilizing fin at the rear. Hmm. Very good in the atmosphere, then. Must do if it's got a stabilizing fin. Weird. Okay, yes. Lots of shots from the first series. Toss, as they call it, the original series. Data feed, the commander of the bird of prey that destroyed the Earth outpost along Nature Zone was a veteran of countless military campaigns. He was extremely wily, and even Captain Kirk was surprised by his tactics on a couple of occasions during their epic 10 hour starship duel. Perhaps because of his experience, the Romulan commander appeared at times wary of conflict, but it did not stop him carrying out his duty for the Romulan Empire. Doesn't say his name though. Not in that bit. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. Huh. Main propulsion unit, sensor array, plasma weapon, command center, support pylon, main propulsion unit, impulse engine, support pylon. It always caught me out all these races, species from different planets, from different solar systems, all seem to share the same technology. Amazing, that. Huh? Even when they meet, met them for the first time. Hmm. Static designs of Wang Ming Chang, celebrated artist Wang Ming Chang, designed many of the most iconic props on Star Trek, including the Romulan Bird of Prey. Wang Ming Chang designed and built the studio model of the Romulan Bird of Prey, which can be seen in this photograph that was taken at the time of the original series. Hmm, cool. Oh, excuse me. And the uh, Spock. <laughs> Trubies! Romulan Empire before the tomed, em the tomed incident or tomed incident. The Romulan Empire was founded 2,000 years ago by a group of renegade Vulcans who left their homeworld looking for a new planet. Because they're related. Yeah. Got that model already. Starfleet first encounter with the Romulans in 2152 when a bird of prey chased Enterprise NX-01 off from the orbit of a planet uh, to which they had laid claim. <laughs> da -da, da -da. Oh, okay. We can see our next episode, actually. That looks different. Uh, key appearances, Star Trek bore the original series Balance of Terror. Star Trek, the original series, The Deadly Years. And... A bulk cube next time. Okay, inside your magazine, the profile bulk tactical cube, a modified version of the bulk vessel that features extensive full armor. That's different. Hmm. Yes, look forward to that one. Hoo -hoo. Different, eh? Very different. And the shot, the winning shot. So let's have a look at this vessel. The nuclear vessel! And here it is in its box, and it surprisingly looks boink boink, rather good. Looks better with the light off. Uh, it actually looks rather good. Uh, let's get it out. Let's rescue it from its tomb. Excrement. That's the ship. Feel, you can hear the metal in that one. Uh, Excuse me, that one, let's put this away, into the wall of Star Trek bricks you go, uh, excuse me, sniffles, alright, let's have a look at the vessel, oh nuclear vessel, sorry, stop doing that now, uh, straight away, you can see, it's not quite as well made as the last model, <laughs> like that. Okay. But it is not bad at all. Some stuff there. Also, if you look in the light, you can see that the metal isn't. 
There we go. Bumping it. But other than that, it's not really a vessel you could sort of cock up too much, is it? Because it's quite simple. Uh, minor stuff. Uh, apart from that, it looks quite good, actually. Yes, I like the colours. I don't want that. But it does look rather good. So, let's have a look at the shots, shall we? There's the face. There's the side. There's the ass. The top. And the bottom. It does have a good bit of weight to it, this one. Uh, compared to that one, which I don't think doesn't appear to have much metal in it at all. But I like the birdie on the bottom. Birdie. There we go. So let's put this on the stand. Splits only. Ah, oh, yes, there's a split in the middle. There we go, it's a splitter. <laughs> well, that one holds nice and firm. Yep. Hmm. So, right, time to change angle and uh, view the two. Be right back. Right, so there we go. There is a number 56, the Saber class, and number 57, Roman and Bird of Prey from the 2260s. So, two good models this month, a few minor flaws on that one but they're actually both quite good models and as usual magazines are quality so we'll see you on the next one and uh, we have news that there is another special coming soon next month perhaps i think I believe next month so we'll be doing that one as a separate video so thank you all very how much uh, subscribe if you haven't uh, there's also a playlist of the other back issues down below my social media is down below if you wish to get involved in the group and get more contact. So, thank you of her. How much? You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>